just pretty good. <laughs> and then usually, oh, sorry, really good. What are you working on? I'm working on one club. Jason said that I'm not quite ready for one, and he will let me know when I'm ready for two. Yep. You sent me a Snapchat of you singing in your choir. Sing, now. Sing. No, I can't do that. What are you looking forward to most at WJF9? Uh, maybe conforming. Performing. Competing? Yeah, per um, beginners. Yeah, if you say performing, Jason will beat you up. It's okay, he doesn't watch my vlogs. Festivals and conventions are my favorite part of the juggling community. The idea of getting to see and meet all of your favorite jugglers in one place was absolutely incredible to me. Juggling's big, but it's still small enough that if you wanted to, you could meet your idols. Want to meet one of your favorite jugglers in person? Find out what conventions they go to. As much as I love going to conventions, it hurts equally as much when I know I'm going to miss one. I know all of my friends are off having a fun weekend while I'm stuck at home trying to imagine what I'm missing. In this video, I'm going to talk about a man whose vlogs really push the community in terms of content creation and why the community would benefit from more content like this in the future. Before I start the video, I just wanted to say I now post new content like this every week, so if you're new, be sure to subscribe. It's free. Enjoy the video. If there's one juggler I appreciated the most in 2013, it was Casey Rentmeester. Casey was, at least to me, the juggling vlogger of the early 2010s. He had a fairly simple setup, a great personality, and seemed to be friends with everyone he met. My first memory of Casey and his channel was back in late 2013 during WJF9. This was the first year I went to a juggling convention, Austin Juggle Fest 2013, and also the first year I learned about WJF and IJA as actual events. I had seen clips from WJF and IJA, but was never aware of the community that existed. Casey's WJF9 vlogs were my first real taste behind the scenes with all of my favorite jugglers. Getting to see Jonah, Vova, Delaney, and Doug on camera talking and having fun made me realize I don't have to juggle by myself anymore. There were lots of kids like myself out there who shared my same obscure pastime. A couple of weeks ago, I was able to contact Casey and get a few words from him. So here's some words from Casey Rentmeester. I probably taught myself when I was uh, like 11 or 12 and then didn't really do much about it. I think I saw a juggler probably at the library or somewhere local and then just taught myself in my bedroom. And, you know, I was supposed to be doing my homework and would juggle instead. Although come to find out years later, that was actually good for you for, for educational purposes. I would, uh, you know, drop the balls on the floor and the parents would yell from downstairs, quit making all that noise. So then I started doing my homework in the basement, but that was just an excuse to juggle in the basement without them hearing the balls landing on the floor. It wasn't until uh, after I had left college when I met some local jugglers in Green Bay, found out about the Green Bay Juggling Club and got into it a little more seriously. We would have meetups, you know, a couple times a month maybe. And then, you know, with the birth of YouTube and social media and seeing other jugglers kind of around the country and around the world, started to learn more about the WJF and the IJA and all the fantastic jugglers out there. So got into it a bit more, you know, going to WJF conventions, going to MadFest in Madison, and uh, made a, met a lot of great people throughout my journeys of going to juggling events. Uh, Full-time, I'm a youth development specialist at the Green Bay YMCA. Uh, so I basically get paid to play all day. And yeah, it is. And so I've been doing that for 15, 16 years. Um, and my role is really kind of strange because... It rotates throughout the year. Um, you know, I work at our Y camp for a couple months out of the year teaching outdoor environmental ed. And then, you know, in the summer doing a, an adventure program for teenagers. And then in the winter, just kind of doing programming at one of our centers and helping out with after school uh, programs and things like that. So that's what I do full time. Um, but I have a lot of things that I'm into. I also do radio part time on the weekends. So I've been doing that for, for many years as well. And I dabble in video production and uh, photography and things like that. That's more of a hobby. But I'm doing a lot of uh, like skateboard documentary videos, like one minute kind of uh, a look into the, the progression of a skateboarder and how they 
work on tricks and things like that. I think I've always had uh, an outgoing personality and haven't been afraid to talk in front of people. Uh, now, juggling in front of an audience, that's a whole other story, but I've always been comfortable talking or presenting in front of people. Um, so I guess it's kind of a natural fit when I started blogging. And I've really been thinking about, you know, ever since you contacted me to do this interview, I've been trying to remember how I started the juggling blogs. And it finally came to me this morning. I think Jason Garfield sort of put it out into the world and invited jugglers to vlog at his WJF events. So I think that's why I started. And then, you know, it's got good reactions from people and people shared that they enjoyed them. So I continue to do it at WJF events and MADFest and at a Seattle Juggling Festival. So it was, uh, it was, it was fun while I was doing it. It's amazing to look back on those videos and see where some of these jugglers are now. And I know some of the folks that I've talked to also no longer juggle anymore, um, or at least aren't, you know, aren't public on social media. But uh, yeah, it was fun. And you know, a lot of my vlogs, man, it's, they were ridiculous. You know, it's about just, I wasn't trying to annoy people, but I was just trying to be silly and goofy and just, you know, find out what, what kind of fun they were having at the convention or at the event or what they wanted to work on or who they wanted to meet or, or, hey, did you eat at the Gold Coast Buffet yet? Just completely random stuff. So that was inspired by shows that I grew up watching, like the Tom Green show or, you know, watching David Letterman do stuff on the street and just being silly. So I, I think that's probably where I got a little bit of my style from. I mean, there's big events that I haven't been to, and I always look for content online to see what's going on. Honestly, I have never been to an IJA festival. And I'm kind of embarrassed to say that. And every year I say, oh, you know, oh, it's close this year. I want to go. I want to go. But just with my summer work schedule, it's always just not within reach. Um, so I still hope to attend an IJA someday. But that's definitely, you know, I, I seek that content too. When, I, when the IJA is meeting in person and kind of looking for videos of, you know, contests or competitions and things. I just appreciate everybody who uh, has watched and I still get new subscribers sometimes. Uh, my channel has so many other random videos too that have nothing to do with juggling. Uh, I had so, if I were able to you know, travel back in time and do it all over again, I would have just had one dedicated channel to making uh, juggling vlogs. But you know, it is what it is. It's sort of a, a archive of my life of different things I've done inside and outside of juggling. So there it is for everyone to see. I'd love to see someone else, you know, do do more blogging and things too, because I would I would enjoy watching that content as well. Thank you, Zach. Have a great day, man. Thanks so much to Casey for joining in on this video. If you want to check out his channel or the recent skateboarding content he's been up to, I'll link it all below. I think my takeaway from this video is vlogging festivals is a really great thing. It allows people to join in on the fun remotely and truly just deepens the infrastructure of the community as a whole. So in the future, I really hope to see new styles of juggling content like this because personally I'd be very, very grateful for it. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more of what I do, feel free to subscribe. Also, if you're interested in supporting me and getting exclusive video content along the way, check out my Patreon. I just released Dr. Pop, a Patreon exclusive. It's 18 minutes of new juggling from me this year. Definitely worth checking out. Link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day.